Aloha Booktube, it's Marilyn Maya, the Baby Boomer Booktuber, and I'm here today to do a tag created by David Murphy. And um, he was new to me, so uh, I had to look him up, and he's a really nice guy. So check him out. The details will be in the description box. And um, he created this tag, 26 Random Questions. And this is my 99th video. And for my 100th, I have something planned. So I wanted to do something that didn't have anything to do or little to do with books and more to do about getting to know me. Um, because I think that if you just check on, you know, you just click on somebody's video, you don't really get to know them. And I, I haven't been tagged for this video. Um, I don't really get tagged too much, but um, I wanted to do it because the questions were really up my street. So without further ado, as booktubers say, let's get on with it. The first question is, what was your most recent YouTube rabbit hole? Well, if you saw the book that I um, held up, Undo It, by um, Dean Ornish, I'm trying to stay alive, basically. And uh, there's another book, and uh, Do Not, uh, How Not to Die, and I forget the name of the author right now, but um, it's, uh, you know, when you get my age, you either say whatever or you find out you have something wrong with you and you say, let me find out how I can live for, till 100 because I got more things I want to do. So the, I, I'm in the second uh, group for that. Okay, so um, another rabbit hole was the Miss Universe contest and I know this might be controversial but um, I've been playing a game with my kids, which is we pick out who we think is going to be Miss Universe. And we've, I've been doing this since I've been very young. And um, the Miss Universe contest has gotten very um, more PC and more diverse, which is good. Um, and I have to say I'm really good at it. And I like to look at beautiful women. Sue me. Is that a crime to look at beautiful women? I like to look at all women. I don't care how, you know, it's, it's funny because, you know, the beauty standards are so strict and they, they, they've always been like that, but even though the, the, you know, it changes throughout the history of what is a beautiful woman and what isn't. And I always wish they had a Miss Petite and I think they do, but it's not as popular. These women are tall, let me just tell you. And they should have like a Miss Older Woman not like a Mrs. America because they're usually mo they used to be models. Anyway, that's my rabbit hole, and um, yeah. But I I mostly watch BookTube videos because I don't have you know that much time to you know go down rabbit holes. Okay, number two. What song is currently stuck in your head? Um, you might be surprised at this one because it's not a typical baby boomer song. But um, I, wa I love singing and dancing, and I watched this program called The Voice, and they had this um, group on from Rome, Italy, called Manskin, and it, the name of it was Beggin, I'm Begging You. And I liked the original uh, when it came out by Frankie Valli, who when I was 10 years old, I even got to see in person um, at the Paramount Theater in Brooklyn but that's a lifetime ago. So they did a really good job, this uh, Italian band. And, uh, you know, I like the lead singer. He's uh, very interesting looking. He looks like one of the statues you might see in Rome. So uh, that's my stuck in my head. And David Murphy mentioned he didn't like the, the word earworm. And I guess I agree with him. Stuck in your head is a, is a better. I mean, I don't want worms in my ears. I mean, do you? Okay, number three, what kind of music do you listen to the most? Now this could be a very long answer because I love music so much. Um, I love all kinds of, well I can't say all kinds of music, but I like music. I've always been musical, I've always sang and danced, and but if I have to say what is my favorite type of music to listen to, it's, uh, um, it's salsa. And um, I used to dance salsa, and now it helps me walk really fast 
because I have some mobility issues and I use a cane and um, I take walks. So if I don't put on my salsa music from, you know, Gran Campo de Puerto Rico or uh, from Colombia, Senora Caruseles or many, many uh, groups um, that I love to listen to while I walk. So I have to say that's my favorite type of music, but I love most types of music. I love pop music. I love folk music. Um, I like um, classical music. I mean, uh, there's few, there are a few genres of music that I don't listen to, but you know, I'm a music person. So that's my answer for that. Um, number four, what is something you need to get better at? Oh, there's a lot of things I need to get better at, but am I really going to get better at all of them? Um, I would say structure. Um, I'm writing a book now or I'm finishing a book and I have a hard time uh, structuring it and organizing. And I think that's because organization is not one of my fortes in life. So um, I work hard at it um, while, so I think I, I, you know, this is my second book that I've attempted to write and it was one, the first one was published and this is like a, um, a second memoir, not to take, uh, you know, like, okay, here's where it ends and now here's the one that uh, comes after that. It's not so much like that, but it's, it's when you, uh, you look back at your life and you, and you realize that you left out a lot of things that were important in the first memoir that you want to, so you write it again, but with a different theme, if that makes any sense. I know a lot of people don't like memoir on booktube, and I can understand that because it's a very hard uh, genre to get right, and uh, not everybody is going to like every memoir. Um, there are memoirs that I really don't like, and I have to say that one of the memoirs that I really didn't like that is very popular is called Running with Scissors by Augustus. And I, I'll let you know what his name is. Augustine. I just didn't like that book. It, it just it didn't do anything for me. And I'm going to get to another sort of memoir later on on these questions. Okay, number five. Do you set goals? What are your goals for the end of the year or for next year? Um, I've always been a goal setter because um, I was brought up in a very um, low income household. And if I didn't set goals, I would still be stuck um, where I was. But I always believed that just having a goal in life makes it more possible for you to reach it. And um, I've done things that people said were impossible, like going to Europe with four children when I had no money. Um, how did I do that? I will give you a hint. There's a wonderful organization called Servas.org right now, S-E-R-S-E-R-V-A-S. -E and it was um, an organization that was started in the 1960s maybe in a Copenhagen uh, folk school. And um, if you don't know what that is, you, 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 you can look that up. But it's, it's schools where there uh, that uh, Denmark, um, uh, made for uh, not so much vocational, but people who wanted to do something different. Uh, so it's a wonderful organization and you can, you know, you join and then you can stay with families, you get a list, you pay a nominal price and you get a list and you can stay with families all over the world for like two days. And I did that all over Europe. Um, and then uh, with the tickets at that time, now my son works for an airline. Uh, so whenever I'm able to travel, I can. But then uh, there were different ways of getting cheap tickets. And I, you know, and this was before the Internet. So I used my library and I uh, found out how to do it. And sometimes the tickets just uh, came to me. Uh, people gave me coupons and it was I was very lucky. But I also had goals of doing those things. Now my goals besides staying alive, um, uh, on booktube, uh, I'm going to talk about that on my hundredth video, you know, because I've been on booktube for a year and some months. And, uh, at my age, uh, I don't like to use the word dog years, 
because I just lost my animal, but they don't live as long as we do usually. And uh, a year and four months, you know, I started on my 70th birthday, so a year and four months is, you know, quite a lot of the remainder of my life. And I want to make sure that I'm doing something that's going to touch people, reach people, um, that's going to be enjoyable. So I'm, I have something special planned for my 100th video, so stay tuned for that. Number six, when was the last time you lost your temper? I try not to lose my temper, but um, I'm sort of, uh, I come from a family where people were always screaming at each other, so I always tried not to lose my temper, but I do have the tendency uh, to lose my temper, and I've always tried to, um, you know, watch that. Uh, but a few days ago, um, I have a, one daughter and a son-in-law who they're anti-vax and they're, they're pro-Trump and, um, you know, anti-mandates and all this kind of stuff. And they call, I called them up about the Miss Universe thing because my daughter plays with me and they started yelling at me. I mean, they weren't yelling at me, but they were so heated that, you know, one was on the one phone and the other got and, and the conversation. And I said, I don't want to talk politics. Please don't yell at me. Please don't yell. But, you know, finally I started, I lost my temper and I started screaming and my uh, blood pressure went all the way up. I made them wait until I took my blood pressure. And uh, so I told them that um, I'm not going to call them if they do that to me because as, you, as I told you, one of my goals is to keep on living. And with high blood pressure, that might be difficult. So that's the last time I lost my temper really bad where I was actually screaming. But um, no, I live a pretty peaceful life, I would say. So yeah, I don't really lose my temper that much. Seven, uh, do you swear too much? I don't swear. I, 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 it's not that I never swear. I would never swear on booktube. That's one thing. But um, I had an a experience when I was a young child where um, I, I was about four years old, five years old, and I asked my mother in all innocence, what does MF fur mean? And she took me with a bar of soap. I didn't even know what I did wrong. And she washed my mouth out with soap. And it's very hard for me to swear after an experience like that. Also, I didn't want to swear in front of my children and my children never swore in front of me. However, there are times in private with my partner that I will use a word that uh, is a swear word. So it's not that, um, you know, I'm a prude or anything like that. It's just that it's just so ingrained in me not to swear. Okay, number eight, do you spend too much money on shoes? This is funny, because I was just counting my shoes and I have one pair of shoes that are wearable. Um, <laughs> so um, I had a pair of good sneakers that I was wearing. Uh, I don't even know how many years I had it. And uh, on one of my walks, I felt the, the flap go, you know, the flap was back and forth and I was saying, how can I keep these shoes? Because I have a very hard, it's not that I have a, a large foot, but I have a wide, f small foot, and it's very hard for me to find a pair of shoes. I think I have a pair of high heels that um, I could take, I hardly wear them, but I probably could take them out if needed. So, um, but otherwise, one pair of shoes right now. Um, did I ever spend too much money on shoes? Not really. Um, it was, I just, yeah, I had high heels because I danced in high heels. I was a salsa dancer and that's how I kind of ruined my hips uh, because I'm not the most, uh, um, I'm graceful while dancing, but otherwise I would be falling all the time. I don't understand how that works, but um, so I ruined my hips by dancing in high heels, but I once had a pair of high heels. Oh boy, it's in my memoir. They were a pair of Lady Arrowsmith, um, diamond encrusted, not real diamonds, of course, uh, five inches because I'm short and I wanted to be tall. And then they were ankle straps. And I loved those shoes so much when um, I brought them to Hawaii uh, and my kids would play with them, <laughs> you know, try to totter on them. But um, yeah, I would buy a few good pairs of shoes for dancing, and that would be all. I, I wasn't really a shoe person. 
Okay, uh, nine. What is the worst book you have ever read? Uh, when I read uh, this question, a book came up to my mind right away. So I said, I got to say what it is. And it's called The White Maasai by Corrine Hoffman. Oh, how I hate this book. Uh, not only is it a misappropriation of the Maasai culture, but this woman, and there was a movie made. I really don't want to um, talk about it too much because she made a lot of money out of the Maasai culture. And she's, she's not a white Maasai. There's no such thing, you know. And uh, some things I said about it because when I get angry at um, a book and I throw it across the room, or then I run to, it used to be Amazon, Goodreads, and I, and I have a review. And some things I said about it was, um, the woman is so self-centered, so stubborn, so man-centered and shallow, it made me sick. She falls in love with a man for his looks alone. Well, a lot of women do that, but uh, so, but, is it his looks alone that she thinks she loves? And maybe her imagination of what a Maasai warrior is and anything at all about the culture, not knowing anything else. And she calls, her, she calls love putting her life in danger numerous times, almost dying, putting her child's life in danger, and not believing what anyone else tells her about the culture. She slowly, and I mean slowly, uh, finds out that what she in, is in love with is not the person who wants him, she wants him to be, but a man with his own culture who is being himself. Um, that's all I'm going to say about it right now. She's also made a lot of money. Like I said, there's a movie made about it, and she wrote two other books that I'm not going to promote here. Um, uh, I did say uh, that, in my opinion, she wasn't a good person, and that she was a piece of work, and, uh, but she's a good businesswoman because she made a lot of money. So, uh, but I don't want to learn from her in that I'm going to make a lot of money doing something that hurts another culture or hurts other people. And she hurt her daughter and she put her daughter in danger. So, yeah. So that's my answer to that. Uh, 10, are you a homebody or are you more in, uh, adventurous? This is a hard question to answer. Um, I would say I'm a homebody and sometimes that got me into the uh, staying home and because I was agoraphobic, which means I was very afraid of going out of the house for long periods of time. And then when I would come out of that period, I had to go someplace really far. Right now, um, I'm still, I'm not adventurous when it comes to like bungee jumping or um, even taking dangerous hikes. And there are some dangerous hikes here and people put their lives in danger many times or swimming or things like that. Uh, so, but I have put my life in danger in other ways, but that's, that's a book. Okay. Um, I love being a homebody, by the way. Number 11 is an unusual question for me, uh, an answer for me. It's, do you take naps? And a lot of people say, well, I'm 50. Of course I take naps. Well, I'm 71 and I've never taken a nap unless I was deathly ill. Like with, uh, I was on death's door with pneumonia and I was, I, I took a nap and then I took myself to the hospital. So that's not a good sign for me uh, to take naps. Um, that means I'm sick. Um, why don't I take naps? Um, I've always had an insomnia problem. So when I finally go to sleep, I'll sleep about eight hours. And once I'm up, I'm up. Um, I don't get sleepy. I go to bed late. I'm a, I'm a night owl and I can wake up eight hours later and then I'm good for the day. So no, I don't take naps. Number 12, have you ever been to Minnesota, the greatest state in the union? I've lived in Minnesota. I have two children and a grandchild in Minnesota. I went there uh, because they offered me at 37 uh, a scholarship to attend a Minnesota university that allowed me to use the credits that I had accumulated in, um, in, in my uh, junior college years in Hawaii, uh, where I wanted to change my, um, my theme. And they let me uh, uh, style my own uh, curriculum, which is a wonderful thing. And it's called Met Met Metro, 
Metropolitan State University, and it's in downtown St. Paul. Um, do I think it's the best state in the union? It's, it's, it's a good state. Um, my, uh, when I brought two of my four children stayed there, and, uh, but I don't like snow. And uh, I remember they used to call it the S word, some people who also didn't like snow. And uh, I remember falling backwards into snow and not being able to get up. And I was younger then too, because I wasn't used to it. And um, yeah, I didn't like the weather. It's, it gets really cold. Um, I don't know about now with climate change, et cetera, people are talking about it doesn't get that cold. But yeah, I don't, I'm not a cold weather person, but I can see that Minnesota is a great place to live. And I'm going there to visit my grandchild. Okay, uh, the next one is, have you ever tried to emulate anyone? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, I've even emulated uh, people, uh, the Cowardly Lion, uh, Mae West, uh, and other people on my channel. But in the 80s, when I was already uh, not young, I mean, not as young as my children were, I had an obsession with Stevie Nicks and she had a song, Stand Back, and uh, she would twirl. And I loved that song and I would uh, get, you know, some, I, would try, I would try to look like her and twirl around. And I, you know, I went to school, at that time I was going to college with my daughter, my eldest daughter, who's only 18 years younger than me. And uh, people thought we, you know, I had my, my cap on and my uh, Stevie Nicks shirt. This was in the 80s. And uh, they thought we were friends. They, were, they really didn't think that we were mother and daughter at the, at the party at the end of the, the year. We were taking a religion class. I think it was Religion 101. We both got A's, but um, yeah, I thought I was Stevie Nicks. You know, I love Stevie Nicks, by the way. I love her music. I love her persona. I love her poetry. Yeah, so if I had to say I emulated anyone or I want, you know, I wanted to be like someone, that would be the person. Okay, so 14, what is the worst food you have ever eaten? Um, I have to say it was in the Philippines and um, I ate a few things that uh, I don't like seafood. Um, I wasn't brought up on seafood, and they have a, a, di a national dish uh, in a place called Malabon, called um, uh, pancet, and it's noodles, which I like. I like the noodles, but they had a lot of different fish, seafood, that really didn't taste well. Plus, well, I won't get into that, but they also serve, and this is a Puerto Rican dish as well, uh, which is blood sausage and I've never eaten it but just looking at it makes me sick so yeah anything like that I think that's the worst thing I've ever eaten but I there was also a lot of Filipino food that I did like bangos I think was a fish a milk fish that I liked I used to eat pork and they made wonderful pork with tomatoes so it's not that I disliked Filipino food it was just that particular dish and I had to eat it because they made it specially for me, and it was full of seafood, and I'm, mmm, yeah, okay. So I, you know, maybe that's why, because I had to eat it, and I didn't enjoy it. Fifteen, do you enjoy bars? What kind? Are you or have you been a regular at one? Um, I have to say no. Um, I used to go to discos, to nightclubs, but I didn't drink there. I went there to dance. So uh, a plain bar, I've never been a regular at a bar. I'm not a big drinker. I never was a big drinker. I only w would go to the bar at the nightclub and ask them for a glass of water. Not saying I don't, I never drank, but not when I was dancing. So um, yeah, I've never really liked bars where you just sat there and, and had drinks. But in Hawaii, it's a little different. Uh, before the pandemic, there's a lot of beautiful bars um, I wouldn't call them bars, but they're more like um, cocktail lounges in hotels that are very nice, and I wouldn't mind going now with my partner. Uh, there's one called House Without a Key, which um, uh, I'd, I'll have the information down below, but it's just off my uh, head, um, that was uh, started in 
the Halikolani Hotel, which is a fam famous hotel in Hawaii. And the person who wrote The House Without a Key, it was a mystery novel. And I'll have the author's name down below. I've never read the book House Without a Key, but the place is wonderful. It has an old banyan tree and um, the Mai Tais are the best on the island. So if you ever come to Hawaii, please visit there because you won't regret it. Okay. Uh, when was the last time you laughed out loud while reading? Um, I, this is one answer I didn't prepare. Um, but I have to say, um, there was a book called Our Spoons Came from Woolworths by Barbara Comlin. <laughs> it's such a funny book. Uh, it's really not a funny book, but there was a scene where she's giving, she's giving birth. And it's just hilarious um, because it reminded me a little bit of giving birth in the 60s. And this was the 40s. And it was, uh, it was sad, but... I laugh so hard. I, I, I just love that book. It's one of my favorite books of the year. Ooh, I said, I, I told a secret. I'm trying to keep my, my 10 best books a secret, but that was one of them. Um, I read another book by her that wasn't a favorite book, but I liked it. The Vet's Daughter, by the way, Barbara Cumlin. Okay. Um, I'm probably saying her name wrong too. Uh, let's see. You know, I think I missed one. Have you ever been hungover? Um, yes, I have. Um, I write in my book that uh, when I was going to Puerto Rican nightclubs, um, I remember being told th uh, by uh, a Puerto Rican guy to drink milk before you start drinking. Uh, and that would stop you from getting a hangover or getting drunk at all. But um, I really didn't like milk at that time or any time. <laughs> because my mother would like throw it down my throat. So yeah, um, but I just, I can't say I really, yeah, I had a headache, but, um, and I, and when I got drunk, it was by accident. I would just, uh, like the time at when I went to the Hali Kulani, uh, and my partner ordered every drink on the menu and I had to try it. And of course, that's not a good idea. Okay, um, how, number 18, how would you label or describe yourself politically? I really, like I said, don't want to really go into politics. Um, I'll say that my family were called blue collar Democrats, and uh, which is kind of a moderate Democrat. And I would say that's where I am. Um, though my daughter, the one who's um, a Trump supporter calls me a leftist. I don't really know what that means, but um, I, I don't think it's a nice thing to say to your mother anyway. But um, yeah, I would say that I'm more liberal than anything else, you know, but not a socialist, I guess. Um, 19. What was the last movie you watched? I have an answer for this, and I don't usually watch movies, but yesterday, my daughter and I saw the um, limited release of West Side Story. And I wanted to see this movie, not only because it's about Puerto Ricans and Rita Moreno is in it, all wonderful things, and that they really had real Puerto Ricans of different colors in the movie, but because I saw the original when I was like 13 and I wanted to compare it. And um, there were things about it that were better and things about it that uh, I didn't like as much. For example, um, they didn't, um, I speak Spanish, like maybe 80 to 90% I understand. And I had to tell my daughter what the people were saying. There was no subtitles. So I had to like translate. And I can imagine that some people might find that annoying that, you know, there's no way of really, unless you speak Spanish to know what they were saying. And a lot of the the, 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 the Spanish wasn't related to the next sentence that they, um, were saying, so I kind of told her some of it was kind of important stuff. But anyway, um, overall, I thought they kept the music, they kept the songs, they kept the dancing. The actors were great. Um, they were musical. Uh, yeah, I would say I liked the movie a lot, but not necessarily better than the first movie. I would say I liked them both. Okay. 
So, 20, do you want kids? Do you wish you had kids? If you have kids, give a piece of advice. I always wanted kids from a very young age because I was an only child in an unhappy family. So I had four children. Uh, will I give advice to anybody? Don't force them to eat. My mother forced me to eat. That's not a good idea. Don't, um, you know, ex let them, let them be, ex let them explore the kind of occupation that they want, but make sure that they're, um, I made sure that my children were exposed to books and reading. And sometimes, and most of the time it worked, you know, that they became readers. Because I do think that that's important. That um, it gives, reading gives you a, a look at different cultures and different ways of living. So I do think that being able to read too is important. Number 21, we're getting on. <laughs> do you get along with your siblings? Um, yes and no. I'm the only child of my mother and father, but my father had children um, before he met my mother in Puerto Rico. And um, I'm, I'm very friendly with my half-sister, um, um, but my half-brother, uh, who was with another relationship, not the woman in Puerto Rico that he wasn't married to, uh, doesn't really... Um, want to have anything to do with me. And I think it has something to do with my mother, but you know, that's his decision. But yes, I love, and the, uh, my siblings that were in Puerto Rico, uh, that, that are still, that are not alive anymore. I was, I love them and we were very close because my father uh, uh, took me there to my abuela and I got to know them and they loved me and I loved them and I miss them. Okay, so 22. What is a book you have serious issues with but love? I guess that I would say Gone with the Wind because I read it when I was 11 years old and I loved the story, but you know, I didn't, at that time, I had no idea that it, ha it was problematic. And um, yeah, so I'm just gonna leave it at that because a lot of people have said that. What is your favorite theme song to a movie and or TV show? Okay. We're moving on up to the east side. Finally got a piece of the pie. Okay, sorry about that. It was the Jeffersons. Um, 24, do you like your job? If you switch careers, what would you do? Um, right now, I'm not working for money, which is uh, kind of difficult because... Um, when I retired as a part-time teacher, um, I get very little retirement. So, um, yeah, if I would, I would like to have my book become famous. I'd like to make money on writing. I'd even like to make money on, on, on YouTube. I mean, just give me the money, any money. <laughs> and then I can buy another pair of shoes. I hope you know I'm joking. Okay. Um, what is something you love about the city you live in? Well, I moved to Hawaii when I was 26. It's paradise. There's things wrong with it, but I've never regretted it. Even though I moved to Minnesota to, uh, from Hawaii for five years, I moved back and I, wherever I went, the Philippines, Japan, I always moved back to Hawaii. Um, I was born in New York City. Uh, I don't think, and my partner is from New York City, and I don't think I can live in New York City any longer. Um, but I, I hope, you know, I, I still have family there, and I would like to visit because New York is still my hometown. Okay, twenty six. What is your celebrity crush? I have two answers for this. My celebrity crush when I was like, you know, really young, and my celebrity crush when I was older, and uh, I don't really have a celebrity crush now, but I loved Yul Brenner, and uh, I thought he was the most handsome man when I saw him in Ten Commandments when I was like five, and I just, I mean, he was sexy, that's all I can say. During the 80s, John Cougar Mellon Camp, uh, he did it for me, and um, who else? Um, yeah, there was a few others, but um, 
they kind of looked like John Cougar Mellencamp. Uh, there was a, a, a Hawaiian guy. I'll put him down on the uh, Keanu Reeves. That's it. <laughs> I liked him when he was young. Um, I shouldn't say when he was young. I don't. I keep on saying when he was young, like they haven't aged well. But yeah, that kind of look that was for me. Um, and that's the end of the 26th. And it's there's a sunset in Hawaii, and um, this took longer than I thought, but um, I hope you enjoyed some of the answers, and I hope you'll subscribe to my channel if you're new, and like, comment, hit the notification bell, and stay tuned for my 100th video, because I'm going to talk a lot about BookTube and my experiences as a 71-year-old woman, or a 70-year-old woman then, uh, trying to be on YouTube or booktube and there's pros and there's cons so stay tuned for my hundredth video and until then my friends from the beautiful island of Oahu Aloha